Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you several different ways to add motion to your cards using pull tabs and levers. This video is part of the Friends of Heffy Doodle inspiration blog hop. It's a, a great hop full of a bunch of fantastic designers. I don't even know why they let me in it, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a great hop. So I hope that you will hop along with us, check out all of the great designers and their fantastic cards. All of our cards will be featuring um, the new release from Happy Doodle. We're celebrating that. Um, as you're looking at my samples here, you might recognize images from previous releases. I've, I've actually mixed and matched sets here, but one thing that all of my cards have in common is that they're all using the new More Strips of Ease die set. Uh, when I saw the new release, there's, there's a lot of fun images in there, but what really jumped out at me is the More Strips of Ease die set, because as an interactive card maker, there it, it's just a super versatile set. So I'm going to show you um, a couple different ways to use it in today's video. And then I hope you will hop along with everybody else. I've got links below. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the strips of ease. So on my magnetic card here, I've got the first three dies that are the original strips of ease. And then this is the new set. This is more strips of ease. So you can see there are two larger and two smaller sentiment strips. We've also got some different cutting edges. And then take a look at this. Um, these three dies right here are slot dies. So they'll cut different sized slots in your cards. You can also use them for like balloon strings, that kind of thing. Um, but for slots, they're super handy. You also get two different pairs of these little V-shaped notches. And you can use them for different things. Uh, mostly they're designed so that they can cut the little fishtail ends on your strips. If you, if you want the fishtail banner. Uh, style of strips for sentiments, that kind of thing. They're actually notched on those edges, so they'll line up perfectly. You'll get a, a nice straight little V. Um, but I'm going to show you a, a different way to use them as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that I want to show you are single levers. So I'm going to show you two different ways to make single levers. But one thing that I want to cover first is that for all of my levers and my pull tabs, I'm using two to three layers of cardstock. So I'll just thicken them up and make them nice and strong. When you're pulling and, and pushing on them, you don't want them to bend. So just cut two or three layers and, and double them up. For the single lever, um, the first thing that you want to do is just go ahead and align the two pieces up and then we're going to grab um, a 16th inch hole punch there. You can also use a pokey tool, whatever you've got on hand. Um, I'll go ahead and overlap the two and punch through. And then I'm going to bring in some mini brads. And these brads are tiny. They're like the uh, fasteners we used to use in school. I'm going to open it up and I'm opening this up loosely so that those two arms can swing back and forth. And then now we, we need a pivot point for our lever. So I'm going to go ahead and punch through both the lever and the back of my card there. And I'm going to connect the two pieces with a second little brad there. That gives us our pivot point. And again, I'm making sure to work it and not open that brad too tight so that it can swing back and forth. You're also going to want to make a collar for the uh, pull tab there just to help guide it, keep it straight as you're pulling it back and forth. So I've gone ahead and I've die cut the thinnest strip from the, the new set, more strips of ease. And I'm just going to kind of fold it around that arm there. And as I fold it, I'm not going to make it too tight. You, you want it to fit fairly snug, but not so tight that it can't easily slide back and forth because it's going to be a guide, but, but if you make it too tight, then it won't move easily. And so I've just gone ahead and overlapped the two folded flaps there and um, glued them together. But notice that I did not glue the inside shut. So I, I basically, I have a collar there. I did add some glue to the back side of the collar and then I will just slide it onto the arm and then I can line it up and stick it down. And you'll see that now you can pull that lever back and forth and it's, it swings back and forth. Now for this type of mechanism, 
with it on the front, you would want to cover it up with like a die cut border. I've got a, a grassy piece here. Um, but if you don't want to have to hide it from the front, I'm going to show you a second way of creating this. And we're just basically going to switch out the pivot point. Instead of using that brad, we're going to come in with the smallest slot, that little slot die that I showed you. So I'm going to grab the smallest one there. And then for the lever, this time I'm using a slightly wider uh, strip here. This is from the original Strips of Ease. It's actually the medium one. And it fits perfectly with the smallest slot for um, the, it, they interlock together perfectly. So I'm just going to go ahead and line it up on my card where I want my pivot point. And I run it through my die cutting machine and I've cut out that slot. And now you can see the um, lever here is going to just fit through there nicely. If it's too big of a gap, then it, it won't it won't pivot nicely. It'll kind of move back and forth kind of sloppy. So you want two that, that are pretty close together. And then I've gone ahead and I've cut my pull tab from a larger strip there. Just I, I like that size. This bigger size is nice because you can stamp pull here on the end there. I'm going to overlap the two where I want them to connect, punch through them with my little punch there, and then again connect them with a brad. So this, this mechanism is only going to use one brad rather than two because we've replaced the pivot point with the slot. And now I can come back in and I will stick that slot in from the back. And you can see how it pokes through the front of the card there. And again, we want a collar around the edge there just to kind of help guide the pull tab, keep it in line. And I do recommend giving all of these a try first with some scrap card stock, anything you pull out of the recycle bin, just so that you can get a feel for how it works and how loose or how tight you want to make things. And then once you're comfortable with it, you can move into your, your good card stock. So I've got another collar here and I'm going to just go ahead and add glue to the back of it. I will slide it onto the pull tab here and I will line everything up and then I can go ahead and push it down. And then now you can see our lever is moving at the pivot point where the slot is rather than having a second brad there. So it's much easier to hide. Let's go ahead and assemble a real card because this video wouldn't be any fun if I didn't show you real cards, right? So I've gone ahead and I've grabbed a stitch circle and I've cut out my finger notches both in my card front and in my card base. And I've also gone ahead and used a stitch border for the edges of my card front. Just I thought that would be fun. Um, I'm not going to walk you through all the pieces on all of my cards, but for this one I'll, I'll show you a few more things here. I've already cut out my uh, grass, my lever, and my pull tab, and then I've got the little elephant from the Elephant of Surprise. You could swap it out for any of the images, but you are going to want this Interactively Yours stamp set because that has all of the words like pull me, push me, spin me, that kind of stuff. and it, it's a, a really great set to have for interactive cards. So the first thing that I'm going to do uh, for this one, we're going to do the slot pivot. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of line things up on my card because I want to decide where to punch the slot. So I'll get the uh, levers kind of in place and get my little elephant in place where I want him to sit on the card. And then I'm going to hover my pencil above and then I can just slide everything out of the way and mark it. That way I can come back in with the little slot die and I can tape it to my card front and then I can go ahead and cut that out. Once I've got that cut out, we can go ahead and figure out where we want the two um, pull tabs and levers to kind of overlap here. And I'm going to line them up in the position where the elephant will be furthest to the right side when the push or when the pull tab is pushed all the way in. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and overlap them, mark them with my pencil just in case I 
move it, and then I can go ahead and punch through there and connect these two with a brad. Again, I'm being careful to open it kind of loosely so that those two arms can swing back and forth. Now I'll slide the lever up through from behind and then make sure that it's working. And we're gonna need to dress up the back here with a collar. Again, the collar is just gonna help guide that pull tab. So I'll kind of line it up, fold it over, and then I'll glue it into place. And now you can see the arms work much better. I can trim off my extra pieces that are hanging off the back edge there. And then we can start covering up the front, the little pull tab area, or I'm sorry, not the pull tab, but the, um, the slot and the lever that's sticking out. Um, we're gonna kind of hide most of that so that the, um, the elephant can sit on top there. I'm gonna go ahead and add glue to my grass. I did use my thumb as sort of a, a little guide for where not to put glue because I don't want any glue to accidentally seep onto that tab or on the grass right next to the tab, I wanna make sure that it's free and clear to move around back and forth. So I'm testing it. Again, wet glue is great for this because you, you have some wiggle room there. You can peel it off and absorb up any if you need to. And then I have gone ahead and I've put foam tape all around the edges um, on the back and then in the inside there a little bit too. Um, I am making sure not to get any foam where uh, the mechanism is moving. Then I can put it onto my card front and then I can put my elephant on with another piece of foam tape. He's just sticking on at the top there. And you can see how the single levers move back and forth with either your brad for a pivot point or the slot. And I just went ahead and decorated the rest of my elephant card off screen. I think he's pretty cute, but we've got a lot to move through, so I don't wanna do start to finish cards for all of these. I do wanna show you another sample that I made. It's exactly the same thing, but he's just decorated a little bit differently there. Um, you may have seen that in the Heffy Doodlers group. If you're on Facebook, definitely make sure you join the Heffy Doodlers group. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on there. So let's talk about a uh, triple lever. It's basically the same thing as a single lever, and you can make it with brad pivots again or with slots, and I'll show you both real quick here. But the first thing that you wanna do is stack up your levers. I'm using three in this case. You can use two if, say, maybe you want eyeballs to move back and forth. Um, you can use more if you want. The more levers that you add, the more friction that you'll have. So you do wanna kind of test it out first. But I like odd numbers, so I'm gonna do a triple here. And the first thing that I did was just go ahead and stack them up, punch out the pivot points in the center, and then I'm gonna line them up and um, with my pull tab here, and then I'm just gonna kind of mark through on the card where that pivot point is for each of those levers. So I'm gonna punch three holes in the front of the card there. And those again are my pivot points. Then I can take that pull tab and line it up behind the card there. And then I can mark those three places again. And that way when I assemble this, those three, those three holes are on top of each other. They're, they're gonna be straight up and down from each other. Um, even if one is slightly more to the left or to the right of the others, they'll still line up and work well together. So then I can come through and mark where the uh, levers will attach to the pull tab. So I'm just gonna come through and punch a second hole at the bottom of each of these levers. And this time I can just stack them on top of each other and use them as a guide, use the first one as a guide to punch out the other two so that I know that they're spaced evenly up from the bottom of the lever there. And then now we can start attaching them. So I'm gonna bring in some more of those little mini brads and I'm gonna grab my levers and I will attach them to the pull tab. 
So you just want to stick the first one through, open it up, make sure that it wiggles back and forth. And you'll see me testing as I go quite a bit, just because it's easier to fix it before you cover it all up. So I, I try to test as I go for this stuff. Um, after I get all three levers attached to the pull tab, then I can attach them to the card. So I'm just going to line those holes back up and attach the three pivot points there. And it doesn't move very easily until you get all three in place. And even then, you're definitely going to want a collar or a guide to help move things along. And also, I should mention, since I'm just working on the thin 3x5 note card there, uh, this paper tends to want to kind of fold, but it gives you a really good idea of how to do this. So I, I like to use little note cards or scrap paper to test on. So after I make a little guide, you can see that that collar really helps move the, um, the pull tab back and forth nicely. Now we're going to do the same thing, but again, we're going to replace the, the pivot points, the brads, with slots. So we're going to just kind of line everything up. I've switched to the wider strips there for my levers because I'm going to line them up with that, that slot and those, those, that size actually works perfectly with the slot. So the medium strip from the original strips of ease works perfectly with the smallest slot die here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out three times and I'm just using the line on my paper here as a guide. You could use a ruler to make sure you kind of line them all up in a straight line and I do find that it's easiest for me to do the left and the right sides and then come back and center up the center piece so that it, it's just I tend to get it more even that way. Then I can go ahead and um, stack all three of my levers and punch through where they're going to connect to the pull tab. So I've got my three holes already punched there. And then I'm going to line up the pull tab and line up the levers on top. Then I can just mark through the hole onto that pull tab so I'll know where to punch the hole there. And I'm going to do the same thing with each of the three levers. Now I've got them marked and I will just come through and punch those holes. And then three more brads here to attach the levers to the pull tab. And again, you can mix and match and you can do more or less levers if you want. I think it would be fun to have two eyeballs kind of going back and forth. Um, maybe for a Halloween card, but you can see how these levers are going to move. All three um, items that you stick on top, they'll move at the same time in the same direction. And again, we want the little collar there to help guide that pull tab. You can also make the same thing out of foam tape. Um, you, you can like make a well on either end to help guide it. So let's go ahead and do this on a real card. Uh, this time for my notch, instead of using a circle die, I grabbed one of those V notches there. And I think it's a really cool one, especially for uh, a different look if you don't want the circles and the bubbly feel. Um, so I went ahead and I just cut the notch out and I actually saved the notch from the piece of uh, wood grain paper and put it on my pull tab. Then I went ahead and I lined up my parrots where I want them to sit on the card. And I'm just going to mark with a pencil. I'll slide them out of the way and mark with a pencil where I want my slots. It's about halfway um, down the bird's body there. And then I can just go ahead, line up that small slot. And then I can punch it out or actually cut it out using my die cutting machine. And I'll do that all three times. And now I can figure out where the levers will sit on, on the um, pull tab there. So I'm just going to kind of line them up. And then 
This time, instead of punching through them in advance, I just go, go ahead and use my pokey tool and push all the way through. That pushes through both the green layer and into the white tab there so I can see um, it, it's marked in both. Even though it's hard to see on camera, in real life I could see that mark. And I'm switching back and forth between the punch and the pokey tool. I prefer to use the punch whenever I can because that actually will remove paper and it generally allows you to, to get more free movement there because you've pulled paper away. If you just poke through with the pokey tool, it works, but a lot of times you'll have a buildup of paper around that, that you kind of punch through but didn't remove. Um, so sometimes you don't get as, as free of a movement. Um, so that's why you see me using the, the punch whenever I can. So I've gone ahead and attached all three levers to the pull tab there. And you see how that notch is going to just line up right there. It's pretty cute. And I'm adding another collar again. And this just helps line everything up, keep it in place, and allow the pull tab to, to pull back and forth pretty smoothly. Now I can go ahead and cover this up. I'm going to go ahead and put glue on um, either side of the, the little slots that we cut out there. And that is going to grab my tree branch there without letting glue um, come across and, and accidentally cover up any of those. And then it's just a matter of decorating the card. So I went ahead and covered them up with my parrots. And you can see how the two mechanisms work with, when you switch out the slots for the brads. You can cover up more or less. And I think this card turned out really fun. So now let's talk about sliding links. So we're going to build levers that, um, that actually have multiple links. You can add more if you want, and they'll articulate. That means they'll go back and forth in opposite directions. Um, in this case, they're going to go back and forth in opposite directions. Articulate doesn't always mean that. <laughs> but um, we're going to use slots to help them slide back and forth. So I've gone ahead and I've cut um, a couple of the tiniest little strips from the, the new uh, More Strips of Ease. And I'm going to punch out the slot near the top of the first one. And I'm going to cut it out from the center of the second one. Um, the second one is slightly longer than the top one. Basically, I want the same different uh, distance from the connection point where I'm going to connect them with the brad to the center of the slots. So you can see when I line them up here, the slots pretty much overlap. And then I'm just going to go ahead and punch out the edge there, just like I did before, so that I can connect them with a brad. And I'm going to open them up again softly so that it can swing back and forth. And you can see I've got the two slots in my two links. And now I'm going to line them up on my card. And I'm going to bring in a pencil and I'm going to mark the center of those slots with them lined up straight up and down. Then I can come in and poke through my card here. That will be the um, attachment points with the brads. And then I also want to mark where uh, my... Uh, where the lever and the pull tab will meet up. And I'll punch through and connect those with a brad as well. Once I have that in place, you can see that it, it slides back and forth. And now we can attach it to the card. And this time I'm punching uh, the, or pushing the brad through the slot and through the back of the card. I'll open it up. And I'm going to do the same thing for the top. And when I open these, I'm definitely being careful to leave some slack in that brad so that those, um, those links can slide back and forth pretty easily. If you find that your brad is too small and that it, it might want to pop through the link, you can always cut out like a half inch circle and then poke a hole in the center of it, like a, 
like a record, and then use that as a washer so you would stack it above your bread. But you can see how it slides back and forth, especially once we put our collar in place. If you don't want um, your pull tab to go across the front of your card, you can always use the medium slot there and punch it through your card front there, and then you can push the pull tab, uh, slide it through like we did with the other ones. I didn't want to do that for this card, so I don't have a sample of it, but you, you get the idea. You just poke it through to the back like we did with the, um, the slot pivots. Okay, so let's do this on a real card real quick here. I've already gone ahead and cut out all of my pieces. I'm going to um, just attach my two links together with the brad there, making sure that they um, move back and forth nicely. I've got a little bit of extra room at the top of that top link there, so I'm going to trim it down. And as long as I leave enough room at the top so that it, the brad wouldn't punch or rip through the top, I'm not worried about trimming it close. Now I'm going to just go ahead and punch through where the pull tab and the lever connect. And then I will connect them um, with one more brad here. This time notice that I'm using a thinner strip for the, um, it's actually the same size strip for the pull tab. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of this pull tab on my card. So I decided to go with a smaller, less obvious pull tab. And I'm actually going to go ahead and mark on my inked piece here, this little background piece is what I'm attaching my um, mechanism to. So I'm going to mark the center of those pull tabs and then punch through the cardstock here. And then I can go ahead and attach the links to the card there. Now these two brads that we're attaching, they're not going to spin back and forth. In my other samples, you saw me use foam tape to kind of um, elevate everything so that there's room for everything to slide around. In this case, those brads are not going to slide around. The links themselves are going to slide. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this card and the little frame um, directly to my card front there and I'm going to glue them down flat. There's going to be extra dimension um, around it so I want these flat to my card and I do not need to worry about leaving space uh, for those brads to move because they don't need to move. So I've just gone ahead and used some wet glue. I'm going to glue this straight down. Um, that frame around it is a piece of cardstock. It's it's the same one that the um, background was cut from. I've also cut that frame a second time from a piece of foam and a third time from some glittery cardstock. You can see them off to the side there. I'm going to take the foam piece and I'm going to cut out a section where the pull tab comes across. And then I'm just going to make sure that that works, that there's room for the um, arm to slide back and forth. And then I will attach the, the foam to the card and then attach the glitter on top that covers up the gap there. And then I can go ahead and add some foam tape for my grassy layer that will cover up the bottom of the mechanism there. And I did test it to make sure that the arm isn't going to slide into that foam. Now we can cover up our links with our leprechaun pieces. So I have gone ahead and I've stamped him twice. The first time I stamped the whole leprechaun, the second time I masked off his face and I just stamped his body. And then I used a pen to kind of connect the lines between the shoulders and then just colored it all in as one piece there or as, as one body piece there um, without the beard in the way. Um, so then I trimmed the two pieces down so I've got a body and a head separate from each other. And you can do this with lots of different um, stamps, but I like this little leprechaun because uh, I like to see. He looks like he's dancing, so um, and he's perfect for St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up. Then I'm going to use a double layer of foam tape. I've got one piece of foam tape on each link, and I went ahead and attached the body with um, to the bottom and the head to the top. 
And then it's just a matter of decorating the rest of this card, which I did off camera again here. You can see how those sliding levers or the sliding links levers work. And I think this is a fun card. Now I want to show you um, one more um, one more type of lever. These are uh, loop sliders. Um, I'm actually going to show you two different versions of loop sliders, but you'll get the gist here. Um, they're slightly different. The reason that you'll use a, a loop slider is when instead of like a, a, a regular um, slider card where you pull the tab and you have um, an item that slides along with the tab, um, you can use a loop slider to get motion in the opposite direction. So when I pull the, the tab out to the right side, my little element that's sliding on the top is actually going to move to the left. So what I'm doing is I am die cutting the medium size tab there and I've got a little strip of acetate. This is packaging from a stamp set um, and I've trimmed it down to a 7 8 inch strip and then I just slid it through those those little slots that we cut there and then I'm going to connect the two. I'm going to overlap them and connect the ends there with um, a piece of heavy duty. Uh, this is score tape. I've found that for acetate you get better luck if you're using double stick tape than wet glue. I haven't found a good wet glue for acetate. If you know of one, let me know in the comments because that would be awesome. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and overlap them. I'm trying to be careful. I don't want this too tight. If you make it too tight, then it won't spin easily or it won't slide back and forth easily. If you make it too loose, your elements will kind of pull down and sag or flop forward. So I definitely recommend trying this once or twice on some scrap paper just so that you can get the tension the way you want it. And, and you'll get a feel for it pretty quickly. Um, and you can always adjust it too. But once you've cut it, you're kind of committed. And some of these, like the score tape, is, is pretty strong. You may end up tearing the acetate. So I definitely recommend trying it first. After you've got the loop on there, then we're going to go ahead and attach our pull tab to the back side. Um, a collar helps guide this around. And you can see I just went ahead and attached it to the back. I like to attach it where the seam is. And that's, it seems to be a good stopping point anyhow for the loop and you're less likely to accidentally pull it apart. Now we can take one of our levers and we're going to attach it to the front. In this case, we're actually going to attach both levers to the front. Um, I wanted two legs because I want to show you how you can add two items and see how when I pull the tab, the loop or the, the leg, the lever there is moving in the opposite direction. Um, so I wanted to show you how to do this with two different legs here because on my finished card here, I'm actually going to use two different pieces that stick up. Um, if you have a, a larger piece or a piece with a gap at the bottom, you may want to use two of these legs here. But um, in this instance for our loop slider, both pieces are going to travel in the same direction. You are going to want to cover up the bottom with something. So let's go ahead and look at my finished sample or my my real card here. I've gone ahead and cut all of the pieces already. I used that medium slot die in my center piece there that's going to have um, the slider. And I'm just going to go ahead and thread that piece of acetate through. Again, that's about 7 eighths of an inch wide. And I just cut it the full length of my packaging there and I can cut off any extra. Um, also, again, I'm using the score tape to connect the pieces or to connect the piece together and make it a loop. And remember with your tension, you want it, you want it fairly close, but not so tight that it, that it can't revolve smoothly. You want that loop to be able to, to go back and forth easily. And then once I've tested that, made sure that that's lined up and sliding the way I want it, then I can go ahead and attach the pull tab. And my pull tab is already doubled up, just like my other sample pieces there. 
I am only going to attach the the pull tab to the back side in the furthest position away. If you attach it too close to the, the finger notch, then it can't pull very far. So you can limit the motion if you want to, but if you want to give yourself the full range of motion, put the end of the pull tab as far away as possible. And you can see how that'll slide back and forth. I'll trim off the extra, and then I'm going to add some foam tape around the edges there, and then I can glue that down or stick that down to the back of my uh, card front there. And then off camera, I went ahead and glued the card front to the card base. And now I'm going to attach my two little legs. These legs or these levers are cut out of acetate. Acetate's pretty great for this because it'll almost disappear completely on your card. You can see that. And I'm just going to kind of place the horse where I want him and line up the second tab there just so I can get the spacing right. And now the front piece that's going to cover up that card, I'm going to use some foam tape. And I just used foam tape around the edges so that it doesn't interfere with any of the movement of my plastic parts there. So you can see that my levers will still slide across without any impediment there. And now I can pull off the top of the double stick tape there and stick my horse in place. And he will slide back and forth. And that's how a loop slider works. But you may have seen um, other loop sliders where instead of them traveling where, where your lever travels in one direction only, you can have them slide in opposite directions. So see here, both of my legs are moving the same direction at the same time. I'm going to show you how to cross them over. It's very simple. Um, you do it basically exactly the same, except where we put our second tab makes the difference, or our second lever makes the difference. So I've gone ahead, created the loop slider, put my pull tab on the back, and then I'm going to stick down the first tab just like I did before. And it's going to be on the far right here, just so that I can get the furthest range of motion. And now I'm going to attach the blue tab to the back. So instead of attaching it to the front, I'm going to attach it to the back underneath my pull tab there, over to the left side as much as possible. And now you can see when you pull that tab, they move in opposite directions. So easy peasy, right? And then I want to show you this last sample. I'm not going to assemble it on, on the video because we're getting really long. <laughs> and I apologize for the length of this video. You guys, I already cut two cards out of this video. <laughs> we're going to have to do a separate video for those. But let's just kind of recap real quick here. I want to thank you for sticking with me through this video. Um, you can see that we've got different types of motion using our pull tabs and levers. And don't forget that today's video is part of an awesome hop. If you uh, enjoy Heffy Doodle stamps and dies, you're definitely going to want to hop along with us. There are some fantastic designers, some really beautiful cards, and there's also some great prizes. So make sure you do hop along and and enter to win. Also, if you're unfamiliar with uh, the Facebook group, there's a group called Heffy Doodlers, and every month there is a challenge. This month the challenge is your choice between interactive cards or going green. So feel free to post your Heffy Doodle makes in the Heffy Doodlers group. We would love to see it, and you can also enter to win um, a monthly drawing. So um, once a month, Anybody who enters the challenge is entered to win a 35 pound gift certificate. So that's pretty cool. And don't forget to hop along. Again, I've got links down below to the next person in the line and also uh, to my blog. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring the bell and come back for my second video on the cards that I ended up cutting out <laughs> of today. Um, and as always, my friend, thanks for watching.